All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, today at this event, both in person and virtually. And thank you, IUCN and uh, Capacity Building Hub for organizing this event today. My name is Shravya Mamidana, and on the way to COP27 here today, I was wondering how to begin this event. And I thought it would be best to begin with a few personal stories uh, that I would like to share with you all here. So way back in 2015, I was a farmer, yes, uh, trying to make bioenergy plantations in rural India viable. And I was running across VCs, funders, private bankers, and who not to keep uh, my farming operations afloat, or rather save my farming operations from continuing, right? And it is at one VC firm that I've heard that bioenergy plantations could qualify for carbon finance. So they've asked me to go back home and come back with numbers on how much carbon we could sell. But of course, I did not know how to do that. Cut to 2017, I was at ICRISAT, uh, one of the many CGIR institutes, and we were researching, or rather trying to understand the right cropping systems or practices in Telangana, India, which would achieve all the three dimensions of climate smart agriculture, right? But of course, again, we were all a group of economists and we did not have the time or resources to uh, perform an in-depth study or collaborate with interdisciplinary teams. Right now, I'm at FAO and together with my colleagues who will join us later, we keep getting requests every day from several institutions on how to integrate environmental impacts into their socioeconomic components or into a traditional cost-benefit analysis. Okay. And I was asking myself, what can I unfold from these stories that I told you just now, right? What are the, you know, common elements in all of these stories, apart from me, of course? And it is that in all the three instances, there was an intent uh, to act towards climate action, right? Or to work towards climate action, whether be it on the ground, at the farm level, or whether uh, at the policy level or investments level or through research. Secondly, there was a challenge, right, to find or access the right knowledge at right time and especially and particularly within limited resources. And finally, uh, the main common element or the third common element is that in uh, all the three stories or in all the three instances, Exante Carbon Balance Tool or Exact in short developed at FAO helped me personally and individuals and institutions all over the world take first step towards turning their intention into climate action for mitigation in agriculture how exactly? As a farmer, I could use exact very quickly to estimate potential uh, emissions or my bioenergy plantations could sequester or reduce, which in turn helped me to incorporate them into my cash flows. As a researcher, I could really identify synergies or trade-offs between switching from one cropping system to another in terms of adaptation versus mitigation conflict. And it allows me every day to address concerns of institutions uh, who are trying to incorporate the same environmental impact elements into their investments. They say the real goal of development is to capacitate a person, uh, an institute, uh, a country, uh, or anyone really, to better respond to 
challenges or opportunities that come along. And today's event is all about how EXACT helps individuals and institutions all over the world to take first steps towards turning their intention into climate action. And in the next, can we switch off this one? And in the next 30 minutes, uh, I will walk you through where we come from, what our goals are, what we do, our reach and impact, and where we want to go from here. Right, I think most of us here today at COP27, and in fact all over the world, have been consumed enough of the uh, grim news of how far we are behind the race to limit global warming, right? And Egypt's COP27 presidency is pushing for stronger commitment by putting agriculture center stage. And perhaps rightly so, because uh, food and land use systems are an important part of the solution. Uh, and their transition to zero carbon could contribute up to one third of the emission reductions needed to limit global warming. For true success, of course, we need not only uh, high level discussions, but also time bound practical actions on the ground. A key part of making those actions happen is to ensure uh, right evidence and right support is available at the right time. And this is really the goal of our work at EXACT, where we aim to synthesize technical climate science into accessible mediums to enable climate action. How do we do this? Uh, we create, uh, support, and engage as you can see in this following slide. There's supposed to be really cheerful music in the background, so I don't know where that's now. <laughs> So coming back, without the cheerful music, of course, what we do is we develop simple, flexible, yet uh, comprehensive uh, tools uh, based on science. The exact suit of tools is a set of three tools developed to harness science-based knowledge uh, to policy and investment uh, decision processes in agriculture sector. So the three tools are uh, modular, but also they work together. So the Exante Carbon Balance Tool, or the Exact in short, estimates GHG emissions from on-farm production activities. The Exact for Value Chains estimates both GHG emissions uh, and socioeconomic impacts of uh, off-farm activities such as processing, distribution, and transportation, and so on. And Beantact helps in uh, evaluating landscape level biodiversity impacts of activities in agriculture sector. So the exact tool is the main tool of the suit, which measures uh, GHG emissions from different activities in the Apollo sector, uh, such as forestry, land use, uh, land management, livestock, and fisheries. 
It calculates emissions based on IPCC uh, methodology using activity data from investments or policies on agricultural practices, inputs and any land use changes using a set of specific emission factors. And it allows the user to build two scenarios, for example, a reference scenario or a future scenario or a with project uh, and without project scenario to isolate the impact of a particular policy or project on GHG emissions in the Afolo sector. It is an Excel-based tool that is organized into 10 modules. It begins with a sort of a description module where the user can enter the country climate and soil details which triggers a set of parameters. And once these are characterized, the user can choose from eight different modules, uh, which you can see on the screen here, uh, to analyze activities they are interested in. So for example, those who are interested in understanding just the impact of grassland-related investments can go to grassland module to enter the main details. And those who are interested in uh, cropland management or forestry and fertilizers can go to the respective uh, cropland management and inputs and investments module uh, to proceed with the analysis. The results are generated using default tier one values, but the tool is also flexible enough uh, to accommodate users to override the default values if they have better data. So what does exact do? Uh, how can it support climate action in agriculture? It firstly, of course, allows anyone to measure uh, carbon benefits or costs of any proposed action, right? It provides the right evidence to identify synergies and trade-offs of different actions. And this in turn helps to identify cost efficient activities uh, and create right incentives to invest. And as it is based on IPCC uh, methodology, it can also help in building baseline emissions scenarios, uh, monitoring and evaluation based on user needs. I will provide more concrete examples on how exact is applied in practice in the following slides. So at the individual or project level, um, imagine you are uh, designing a project in Timor-Leste and you want to convert some 2,005 hectares of annual cropland into forests, right? And you have uh, prepared a detailed cost-benefit analysis and everything uh, is sound uh, in terms of socioeconomics. But now what if you also want to know whether this action in fact will create a positive or a negative impact on environment. This is where you can use exact. And by simply entering a few details uh, on one line in the Excel tool, you can immediately see the impact of your action or your investments. In this example, of course, converting annual cropland into tropical forest uh, has positive impact on the environment as it sequesters emissions. Uh, similarly, you can assess several such activities and you can view the detailed results in the exact tool. And these numbers can be used uh, together with, let's say, a social cost of carbon to understand the impact of your investments and mainstream, uh, mainstream these into cost-benefit analysis. And our idea with the exact tool is also that one, um, one can use it to analyze not only climate-oriented actions that target mitigation specifically, but also use it to measure mitigation as a co-benefit that can come from food security and adaptation projects, which of course take precedence. The second example uh, is about how you can use exact to create bottom-up um, or bottom-up context-specific marginal abatement cost curves or max in different AFOLO sector actions for uninitiated, if any, uh, the max are famous uh, tool in climate change policy making, right? But most often these come from big models and may not always uh, represent local reality or an institutional need. For instance, you are at the World Bank 
uh, or any other institution and you have invested in several agricultural projects across years, you could use exact tool to aggregate evidence from all these projects and build context specific MAC curves which can serve uh, as decision inputs to decide your strategy and investments going forward in the sector. And context as we know is, is really matters in um, climate action. I would also like to highlight some examples here on this slide of how EXACT has been used for reporting, monitoring, and mainstreaming climate action at different levels. So World Bank, IFAD, and Ugandan Development Bank have all adopted EXACT as the main tool to mainstream GHG uh, accounting of their agriculture investments. GCF and JF as two of the largest dedicated funds channelizing climate finance uh, into developing countries have al also regularly used EXACT uh, to evaluate investments in agriculture sector. And currently six countries including Cambodia, Belize, Haiti, Niger uh, and Guinea have used EXACT to develop um, country level of follow measures. Uh, baseline estimates and possible future scenarios to report in their nationally determined contributions. Tools are of course just a means, right? Our main work of indeed revolves around strengthening the individual elements of action for climate empowerment. So we support individuals, organizations, institutions, and governments through education, training, and free access to information and increasing public awareness. We connect the participants with essential information and resources that we believe can improve their ability to integrate mitigation aspects in their decisions in the AFOLO sector. So we not only train them on how to use the tool, but also continuously guide them in producing robust assessments from making realistic assumptions to asking the right what if questions. Uh, and we also actively reach people across universities and governments to increase uh, awareness of climate action in agriculture. We participate and cooperate with stakeholders across decision making and implementation teams for joint efforts. For example, in the hand in hand initiative of FAO, we connected with uh, local country level representatives, economists and financial analysts and other stakeholders including private and public investors uh, to showcase the environmental impacts of investments and why it matters to measure them. At EXACT, capacity building is, is much more than just the transfer of knowledge and skills and we believe that effective capacity development needs organizational uh, engagement at many levels from individual to institutional. And in the following slides, I will share with you some of our main engagements and these three different levels. So, we support institutions who are interested in strengthening their vision, integrating their strategy, structure, and monitoring processes to mainstream agriculture GHG accounting systems for climate action. Following the vision, we encompass mainly three activities, uh, which are skills upgrading in terms of using the exact tool through trainings and procedural improvements and technical backstopping as needed. Uh, some of our engagements at an institutional level are with World Bank, IFAD, uh, governments in the Caribbean, and so on. At the organizational level, we support in developing procedures and monitoring systems and advance uh, techniques to measure progress towards goals, uh, as we currently do with the Ugandan Development Bank which uses EXACT uh, as the main tool to measure the carbon footprint of uh, investment projects that they approve for loans. And together we are exploring how to develop preferential interest rate schemes uh, to spur green investments in the agriculture sector in the region. And finally, at the individual level, uh, we are beginning to embrace uh, the emerging idea of capacity bridging as our previous panelists uh, discussed. 
which aims to acknowledge that all parties bring skills and knowledge uh, to a collaborative experience, right? And recognizing these diverse forms of knowledge can lead to stronger climate action. And in fact, capacity bridging more appropriately represents our reality as uh, communities, farmers, individuals, each one of them have numerous capacities on their own to plan, to organize, to implement, to act, and they just simply require uh, action, uh, support to, let's say, bridge the science into context. And this is exactly what we are trying to do with, uh, with our uh, engagement uh, with farmers and uh, producer organizations associated with forest and farm facility. So forest and farm facility, or FFFs, work with many farmers and enable them to sustainably adapt uh, climate smart uh, and climate friendly agriculture activities. And we are currently training them to use exact to demonstrate uh, the environmental benefits that they generate. And we believe this will empower them to have a stronger voice in climate action, whether through visibility of their actions in itself or whether through an eventual access to carbon markets, uh, potential carbon markets, let's say, and also negotiations with government. With uh, this said, I will pause here for a bit and uh, invite Joanna Ilicic, uh, our exact coordinator at FAO, to share with us all today uh, some of the key achievements uh, of exact in building capacity for transformation in climate action in agriculture. Hello. Hello, can you hear me now? Perfect, thank you. Sorry about this. Uh, it, um, um, it's not really sure, um, not obvious how to, how to figure out whether you hear me or not. Um, but I'm very pleased to be here with you today. Um, as Shravya has mentioned, my name is Joanna Ilicic. I'm a climate change mitigation economist and also a coordinator of all activities around the exact suite of tools. It's a real pleasure to join you virtually today and to share a few key messages on the impact that our work has generated to date. What you see on the screen are some of our main achievements. Starting from a large perspective, in 2020 alone, EXACT tool was used to measure carbon benefits in about 8% of the entire climate finance that flowed into AFOLU sector that year. This is close to 1.3 billion US dollars. Cumulatively, we have assessed the carbon benefits or costs of around 27 billion US dollars, which correspond to an estimated mitigation potential of 4 billion tons of CO2 equivalent measured over 20 years, coming from activities implemented on 172 million hectares. But what is even more important is that in recent years, we have trained about 2,500 individuals to use the EXACT tool. If we think that each of these individuals used EXACT at least once, the numbers that I have just presented to you would become at least several times higher. Of these estimated investments, naturally most of the emission reductions come from forestry and agroforestry related activities. Yet we also know that implementing such activities may require substantial financial resources. While there are also relatively less costly uh, uh, interventions that may lead to changes, uh, for example, as those uh, related to management of annual cropping systems, 
which can also bring important carbon benefits. For example, through our engagement in Uganda, we could see that changing crop management practices from fertilizer to manure and introducing reduced tillage uh, alongside the uh, residue retention, we uh, could have an important impact. In this particular case, it allowed us to improve carbon balance up to 20%. This underlines why it is so important to empower all the stakeholders to perform systematic carbon accounting and to ensure that their activities at any level, be it farm, regional, or national, or international, they all contribute to the so needed emission reductions and carbon sequestration efforts. We believe in coordinated and cooperative capacity enhancement and therefore actively engage with project stakeholders to assist them through a learning by doing approach. And what you're seeing on the screen right now is a glimpse of all the projects since 2020 that we have supported around the world. The results of project assessments of different activities and their associated emission reductions potential can be accessed by users interactively, as you can see on the screen. This delivers a very powerful message through numbers and associated narratives, which can inspire others to take first step toward climate action on their own. The key message we want you to take out from this is that capacity building is not an end goal in itself, but rather how the capacity building leads to action and transformation to a more climate-friendly agriculture. And it is really the small achievements that we are the most proud of, like the voices you have seen in the short video at the very beginning of the presentation of Shravya, which came from the participants of our capacity building events. And we believe that really these small achievements are those that eventually make the change. I will close my short intervention by sharing one final example to draw a key insight for capacity building. A few months back, we have supported a food security project in Yemen, financed by the World Bank, and that project was implemented by FAO colleagues. The project targeted increasing number of livestock to improve the food security situation in the country. As such, the project was bound to increase emissions, of course. But our team worked with the project personnel to determine what other activities would be feasible to implement and to reduce the increased emission effects. As a result of this work, introducing improved livestock management practices combined with vegetation restoration activities allowed us to turn a net emitting project into a net mitigating project. I have shared this specific example to underline that capacity building is a process, it's progressive and it's cumulative. Often agricultural projects have multiple stakeholders and each one might have to make decisions related to project design and that is often in the absence of robust data. Any improvements we suggest require buy-in from multiple stakeholders and any previous interactions and established relationships are very important because they serve as a signal to trust and mobilize buy-in. As such, exact unit plays a critical role in identifying these opportunities and acts as an integrator to bring all the actors together. And this is because of our long record of high quality work and reputation we gained over the years to working with many institutions and stakeholders around the world. Today, we, the exact team, are many individuals from diverse areas and backgrounds who have the skills and experience required not only to understand the points of view of different stakeholders, but also to identify key questions to address, to engage them fully in climate action in agriculture. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and pass the floor back to Shravya to continue with her presentation. Thank you.
Thank you, Yonna, for sharing some of your key insights and achievements of exact over the years. And now the question arises, where do we want to go next? And we see the need to improve capacity as climate action in agriculture takes center stage on many levels. So with close to close to 95% of the NDCs uh, have conditional or unconditional mitigation targets in uh, agriculture as on date. And private sector zero carbon initiatives uh, and carbon market enthusiasm is growing with global players such as Bayer or startups like Norevi or Grow Indigo uh, creating systems to pay farmers to voluntarily adopt uh, carbon smart practices. And this is where we want to focus our efforts, right? Uh, we want to embed capacity within its specific uh, context at a policy level. Uh, despite NDC commitments, many of the <coughs> countries still do not have MRV systems in place uh, that can estimate baseline emissions or the right MND systems to monitor climate action in agriculture and we want to work with them. And at the individual level, we want to empower farmers with information which they can use to leverage their bargaining power in a future potential uh, carbon market. And of course, in focusing these efforts, we want to acknowledge uh, challenges, technological and financial challenges of the climate action in agriculture sector exist, which will require multi-dimensional uh, solutions. And there are lots of issues with adaptation and resilience that we've uh, heard from the panelists before. But our focus today is on the one main challenge we see in capacity building for climate action in uh, agriculture, right? The need to move away from just a techno-managerial capacity building narrative to opening up a plural uh, and a diverse capacity bridging approach. And this is not an easy task. Uh, this requires sort of conscious unlearning from everyone involved. And what do I mean by this? Uh, for instance, through our engagement at the farm and forest facility and farmers, we realize that a forest or an agroforestry system uh, is perceived differently by different stakeholders, right? So it might mean one thing to a farmer, it might mean another thing to the forestry department itself. And uh, these definitions do not always necessarily overlap with the definitions we use in scientific community and tools. So then the question arises, of course, who unlearns what and how to move forward. And the challenge is about also how to diffuse any resistance and reshape evidence uh, to drive forward climate action. And this is one of the many uh, challenges that we want to take up uh, to inspire more climate action. Indeed, climate action is a big, big puzzle, right? And it includes several smaller puzzles uh, across multiple dimensions. And each one of us here today at COP and in this event are trying to find their smaller puzzles to solve. And we at EXACT are also trying to do the same. And for now, uh, the main puzzle pieces in solving our puzzle is to find the right way to bridge science, policy, and implementation, and how to provide the right evidence at the right time, and setting the big picture, which is that even small changes matter, like you have seen from Joanna's presentation on Uganda, uh, and embrace capacity as a never-changing uh, entity, which uh, requires co-learning and sharing. And of course, to kickstart uh, our call for inspiring more climate action and keeping in the spirit of this event on capacity building, uh, we want to end our event uh, with a quiz that will both help you test your knowledge and help us understand your insights. And I request all of you present here in person so just give me a few minutes to figure this out.
I hope all of you were able to join us on this quiz. If not, I request you to virtually um, enter crowd.live and enter the poll code F5PBM to join us in the quiz. All right, this is a close call. The right answer indeed is false. So while reforestation will be important, halt to halt uh, and reduce uh, climate, uh, ac sorry, climate action, uh, <coughs> uh, it is important to avoid <coughs> large-scale deforestation in the first place because afforestation will be important but compare, which it can take on an average 25 years to reach uh, or reap the benefits of uh, restoration or climate benefits. And on average, uh, avoiding deforestation is seven to 10 times more cost effective than uh, reforestation or afforestation. All right, wow, I see a lot of words for false and it is indeed the right answer. While tropical dry forest uh, sequesters close to 186 uh, tons equivalent over 20 years, a temperate forest sequesters close to 426 uh, ton uh, CO2 equivalents. And this clearly shows why context matters in climate. And we will now go to the next question. Is reducing the use of uh, fire as a land management practice uh, a part of a mitigation strategy? Well, I think this is a very easy one. Indeed, it is one of the most important mitigation strategies in practice today. Let's move on to the next question, which is a project that invests in livestock. Does it always increase emissions, or does it always sequester emissions, or may it also reduce emissions? interesting to see the answers and most of them got it right. It may also reduce emissions based on how you mix together investments and interventions, right? Like how, you, how we, could have, we could take this away from Joanna's intervention that she mentioned uh, in Yemen. Let's move on to the next question. So how many countries used exact to estimate and project a follow scenarios in their NDCs? And wow, I'm really happy that most of you got this right because this slide was up on our presentation and it seems like you're paying attention to that. Thank you. Um, next question is, how many NDCs have an estimate of baseline emission scenarios in the agriculture sector as of September 2022? Can you guess? All 
right? I see a distribution of votes. Some are very optimistic and some are very pessimistic, but let's take somewhere in between. So 36% is the right answer. So that 36 per, close to 36% of the NDCs which report some action in agriculture have uh, baseline uh, emission scenarios embedded in their NDCs. Next question. How many NDCs report that MRV systems uh, to track mitigation progress in agriculture not, are not yet in place or where they don't provide any information? And again, I look at the distribution of answers and I see there are some people who are very positive about it and who are not very optimistic about it. And the right answer is in fact 67%, uh, which I see most of you got that right. And close to 67% of NDCs uh, that report mitigation uh, in agriculture as a target do not have MRV systems in place and this is where we want to work with them together. Now take a minute to think about what capacity building is for you in the context of climate action in agriculture. And you can type it on uh, in the answer. empowering people for climate action, giving people tools to act independently, good production, enhance effectiveness, hands-on training. Right. I, will, I wish to pick up some of these words and uh, engage in a conversation uh, further and maybe if someone here in the room who has provided a responses want to share some of their thoughts, Right, so moving on, we can go to the next question. How should capacity building adapt to ensure climate action? I think this is a trick question. For me, it's all of the above, right? You need to be more inclusive, less hierarchical, integrate diversity of opinions, and uh, adapt to co-learning uh, in order to ensure climate action. But, I, but I'm also happy to see the responses. One final question to wrap up the section event today is, uh, I want to hear from you how optimistic you are about contributions of a follow sector to mitigation in the coming decade.
hopeful but not optimistic. I like this answer on the scale of 1 to 10, being 10 being the most optimistic, they are optimistic at a level of 3. So thank you whoever has answered that for us. Quite pessimistic, we need to do more. If there is no action, the food system will collapse. always hoping for more systemic transformations than incremental progress only. And I think this is a good place to end this discussion today, hoping for more systemic transformation than incremental progress only. And thank you for joining us today at this side event. And we would like to end up by playing this video. Agriculture accounts for almost one-fourth of all the greenhouse gas emitted by humans. If food processing is added, this share rises to more than one-third. Agriculture is also a victim of the changing climate. Extreme weather events, biodiversity loss and land degradation are undermining the sector's productivity and putting many livelihoods at risk. Yet, with the right set of policies and investments, agriculture can be a part of the solution. Policies and investments must help to reduce deforestation, help to restore degraded land, and promote sustainable agricultural practices and biodiversity conservation. The X-Act suite of tools gathers the evidence complementing the information available to decision makers on the outcomes of their agri-food interventions and helps them manage the multiple challenges and trade-offs that the sector is facing. X-Act quantifies the amount of greenhouse gas released or sequestered from agricultural production. Say you are considering an investment in an apple plantation. X-Act can help you understand the GHG fluxes associated with apple production and ensure you maximize the climate change mitigation potential of your investment. X-Act VC analyzes the outcomes of activities from agri-food investments along the agricultural value chains. Outcomes can be analyzed throughout the whole value chain or for specific segments. If you would like to calculate the carbon footprint of producing a bottle of apple juice, XACT VC can complement the XACT analysis and quantify the environmental and socio-economic effects of producing the apple juice from plantation to table.
The Intact looks at the biodiversity outcomes of agricultural activities. It can assess the effects of your apple plantation investment on local biodiversity. It quantifies the degree of biodiversity intactness and estimates the monetary value of the ecosystem services lost or preserved. The X-Act suite of tools can be applied at any stage of the intervention, design, implementation and ex-post evaluation. They can be applied to individual projects or investment portfolios, as well as national level programs or strategies, informing decision-making processes at any level.